Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm showing you how I customized my master bathroom for less than $175 to give it a rustic spa feel. If you're new here and you enjoy budget-friendly home decor DIYs, thrift flips, and room makeovers, I hope you'll stick around by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell. To all my current subscribers, thank you so much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. We recently had a leak behind our shower and we had to remove half of the sheetrock wall. When we reinstalled new sheetrock, we added this access panel from Lowe's so that if we had any future leaks, we would easily be able to get to them without having to replace the sheetrock. So we've already mudded this up. It needs a final sanding before painting. My bathroom has two separate sections, which I love. Above the toilet used to be a window. We added onto our home a few years back and I asked the contractor not to close this section up. I knew I wanted to turn that into recessed shelves. So I added some beadboard to the back and a few wooden pieces for the shelving. We currently hang our towels on command hooks right outside of the shower. And I love my garden tub. I love to take soaking, relaxing baths every once in a while, but it is very plain right now. And it is a very beige color with all of these brown tones. I just don't think it looks that well together. We have a linen closet and then we have a five foot vanity, but I'm not sure why the builder chose to put such a small mirror above it. I just don't think that it looks good together. I've already decluttered and reorganized my linen closet and my vanity. I will have that video linked in the description box if you are interested in seeing that. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the items from the wall that I'm going to be repurposing somewhere else. And then I can patch those holes up to be able to prepare it for paint. So I'm going to put thin coats over those holes, let that dry, sand it down a little bit. And if they're pretty deep, I'll go back over it and add some more mud until I get a nice smooth finish. I'm also going to remove all of the outlet covers as well as the light switch covers and tape around my countertops and cabinets as well as the tub surround and cabinet to prevent any paint from dripping on that. I also, when I paint, like to have a wet paper towel or a wet cloth just in case I get a little paint on those areas. I can wipe them up very easily before the paint dries. I have gone ahead and put a drop cloth in my tub to protect it from getting any type of paint splatter. And I always like to cut in first when I paint, which means painting the tops of the walls, the bottoms of the walls, the corners, and all of the trim before I take the roller over it. I am using Valspar's Signature Paint in an eggshell finish, and I chose the color White Sash because I wanted a different color white as well as a different sheen than my trim. I didn't want my trim to blend in with the walls. Because we're going to be replacing the mirror, my husband, who is an electrician, moved the light switch down so that we would be able to place our new mirror above that. So now I need to patch this hole and make sure that if you're doing something like this, that you get a licensed electrician when it comes to moving electrical wires. I am using this self-adhesive wall repair kit to place over this hole. You want to make sure that it is smooth before you attach this. It has like some metal wiring in it and the outside edges are sticky. So it will hold in place perfectly. You just want to smooth it out. And once you have that smoothed down, then you can take some mud and put a thin layer over the entire patch. You want to apply thin layers. You don't want it to be lumpy and it will take so long to dry. Now, I'm not going to have to sand this down because it will be behind my mirror, but I also didn't want a very large hole behind it. So that's why I patched that up. Now I can remove the tape and you can see these beautiful crisp paint lines. I love that. For the back wall of my tub, I knew I wanted an accent feature, so I am measuring 
each section because nothing is perfectly square. I'm using a stud finder to mark the studs in the wall so that when I add my accent feature, I will know where to place the nails. I wanted to add a wood accent wall and because materials cost so much, the most cost effective way I could find to do this is to use some dog-eared fence pickets, which are $1.98 for a six foot piece. Now my wall is a little less than six foot, so these are gonna work perfect. After I took all my measurements down, the two bottom pieces will be slightly shorter than the other pieces, so I did make sure I marked the back of them. They do have a rough edge on all sides of them, so I'm taking my electric sander and sanding down the top and the sides and the ends until I get a pretty smooth finish. They're also pressure treated, so that's gonna work out since this will be in a room that has moisture. So if you want a very smooth board with no types of grain or texture in it, or if you don't want the pressure treated um, coloration that it has in there, you may wanna choose a different board. To stain these, I am using Minwax Poly Shade in the color Mission Oak. It is a color that's very close to my cabinetry, but not exact because I did want a little bit of contrast. And it also has a polyurethane in it, but I will still be applying polyurethane since this wood will be in my bathroom. There's two different ways you can apply stain. The first method I used was just by applying it with a cloth. This method, you can just take a foam brush and apply it in one section and then take your lint-free cloth and blend it in. This stain really brought out this beautiful grain and the knots in this fence wood. It is absolutely gorgeous. Again, I am going for that rustic look, so if you don't like the variation, you may wanna choose a different board. I am using Minwax Polyurethane in a satin finish to apply to the wood. As you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you stir it just like in your stain. You wanna stir it throughout the application to keep the color consistent. And with the polyurethane, you want to stir it to make sure that none of the sediments go to the bottom. I'm applying this with a foam brush on the top and all of the outside edges. I will allow that polyurethane to dry and apply a second coat on the top. And because this is gonna be in my bathroom, I am also going to apply a coat on the back. I just wanted to make sure that all areas are covered since this will be in a room with moisture. I don't want any type of mildew or, or moisture or anything like that getting into the wood causing any future problems. Now, as you can see, I didn't stain the back, but again, I am applying that coat of polyurethane for added protection. I allowed it to dry for several days before installing it in my bathroom. I'm starting on the bottom part of the tub because I know that surround piece is already level. And a wonderful friend of ours let us borrow his battery operated finish nail gun, which came in so handy and made very quick work of this. So each time I'm adding a board, I place my level on top to make sure that everything's level before I nail it down. If anything's a little bit of a tight fit, I'll take a piece of scrap wood, hold that on top of the wood, and tap it down until I get it in place. You may want to space yours. I did not space them because these boards are not perfectly straight, so it already had a little bit of spacing in it. So you may want to take into consideration if you use this to create an accent wall so that you can prepare for the color of the wall behind your wood. I don't mind a little bit of white peeking through, but if you don't like that, you may want to paint that section of the wall in a similar color as the stain you choose. Another way to freshen up your bathroom is to apply new caulk. They have different colored caulks other than just white and clear. I chose to go with a little bit of a darker color around the tub surround as well as the countertop at the vanity, but I, I went with the traditional white on the top parts to really blend in the wall color with the backsplash portion on the vanity as well as the tub surround. 
Now, I want to create a beautiful place to hang our towels when we get out of the shower. So I am using some scrap one by fours that we had in the shop. And I'm gonna cut those down to create a frame. So I am cutting down two at 36 inches and two at 27 inches. I am also going to take two more of those fence boards and I'm gonna cut it down to lengths of 19 and 7 eighths of an inch. That way I will be able to get three sections out of one board for a total of six. So this is what I am creating right here. Now, because I have a little bit of spacing there, I'm gonna cut those two 36 inch pieces down to 33 and three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to be attaching all of these pieces together with my Craig jig. But before doing so, I'm gonna make sure I sand everything down nice and smooth. And if you don't have a Craig jig, but you do enjoy doing a lot of woodworking, I highly recommend investing in this. I use mine a lot. It just creates very strong joints. What I'm gonna do is I've already set the depth of my wood and the collar for the drill bit. And I'm gonna place my wood into the Craig jig to drill these pocket holes. For the top piece, I'm going to drill two holes on each side and then one hole on each end so that when I put everything together, I'm going to be able to attach each board to the next board. So here you can see on the second board, I only had to put a pocket hole on each end and then two holes on the opposite side. And then on the very end, two pocket holes on the side and ends so that I'll be able to attach that to the frame when everything's done. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and attach my fence boards together by using the pocket screws that will go into these pocket holes and drill into each piece of wood. And it just creates, like I said, a very strong hold and it's a nice tight fit. So when I finish connecting all of these together, it is one solid piece of those six fence boards. Now I'm going to realign my Craig jig for the depth of the one by four pieces. And I'm gonna drill two pocket holes on each end of the two long pieces so that I'll be able to attach these to the two shorter pieces to create the frame. And all of this will make sense when I put it together. But I'm pre-drilling all of this so that I can paint the wood and I'm painting the frame portion in a semi-gloss high ultra white color, just like the crown molding and the baseboards and the window trim that are currently in the bathroom. Then I'm going to use the same stain on the fence boards and I'm using these painters pyramids. These come in so handy. You can place these right under your board and be able to stain one side, flip it over and then stain the other side if you need to. Now I only stained one side and then the outside edges of this, but I did flip it over and apply polyurethane to the back once that's dry, I'm going to apply two coats of polyurethane to the front, just like I did the accent wall. Now it is time that everything has dried. I can assemble my pieces together and I'm going to line them up, put a clamp in place so that I can attach the outside part of the frame to the bottom part of the frame and then attach each piece of those fence boards to the outside of the frames and I will continue to do that until all of the boards are attached together. This is going to give it a super strong hold and I absolutely love how it turned out. It is so beautiful. I'm going to hang this on the wall right outside of the shower area and I'm going to attach it by just placing nails. I have already marked where the studs are in the wall and I'm measuring out to make sure I have an equal distance on each side 
And again, I used my level to make sure everything was level so I could go ahead and nail that in. Now I do go back and fill in those nail holes with wood filler, sanded that down, and painted it smooth so they blend in. I'm gonna reattach my command hooks right in place for a place for our towels to hang. Now comes the fun part with this mirror. So I taped it off, hoping that I would be able to pull it down in one piece, but that did not work for me. It had three different glue strips behind it and there was no way I could get it off in one piece. So I did place a drop cloth down and I had to break it into a bazillion pieces, but luckily I'm not superstitious, so everything worked out fine. My husband and I installed this new mirror by adding some mirror adhesive to the back, putting it in the track that was already there, and then adding a clip at the top. I applied tape all the way around it to allow that glue to set up for 24 hours, and it has already made a huge difference by adding this very large mirror to the vanity space. Now to create a few DIYs for the bathroom, I'm using a scrap piece of half inch plywood that measures 16 by 20 inches and a small piece that measures five by seven and three quarters of an inch. I'm also using some scrap, uh, I believe they're like one by twos. They're rounded on three sides and flat on another. I'm gonna cut these at 45 degree angles to create a frame for the sign. And I do not have the exact measurements, but what I did was just hold it up to my plywood to make my markings so that I would know exactly where to cut my angles. And then I'll cut my side piece, one of the angles, hold it in place, and then make a mark at the bottom so I'll know where to cut that angle. So the top two pieces are the same size, and then the two side pieces were the exact same size. So I cut that final piece down. Once I know everything's gonna fit together perfectly, I'm gonna go ahead and create the exact same type frame for the smaller sign. I'm gonna sand each of the plywood pieces to make sure they're nice and smooth, and then I'll remove any of those dust particles before painting. I'm gonna paint each one of them in the same paint that I used on the walls in the bathroom. And this only takes about one and a half coats. I'm also going to stain the outside frame pieces with the same Mission Oak stain so everything will coordinate and go well together. I'm just applying this with a lint-free cloth and then wiping all of the excess off and blending it in. I created a decal on my Cricut, which I have as a free printable on my website, which is in my description box below. If you would like to go over there and print that out, you could trace it onto your project. If you do have a Cricut, I used the fonts Hello Butterfly for Grateful and Ariel for the rest of the wording. I'm going to attach these frame pieces to the plywood, but before doing so, I'm going to add some wood glue. And yes, my top of my wood glue is broken, so I am applying this with a Q-tip. Once I have everything lined up, I'm gonna take that finished nailer and nail those outside frame pieces into the plywood. Now I did have a couple of mishaps where the nail came through at the top of the wood, but I'll show you how I fixed that. When I add the side pieces, I made sure I added some glue at the corner pieces and nailed the rest of the trim in. Now I've already removed those nails that popped out at the top part of the wood. So I'm gonna take some wood filler and then you add this hardening to it. It's almost like a mud feel, like when you're using sheetrock mud. And I'm going to apply it to those areas with a putty knife and then I'm going to sand it down nice and smooth after it dries, and then I can touch that up with the paint, and you won't even know you made a mistake. But that's a part of learning. You will never know if you don't try, and if you make a mistake, you can always fix it. Now I'm going to add a hanger to the back of this. This is a hanger that I just took off of another picture that I had around the house that I'm not using anymore. And I'm going to find the center. Now because this sign is a little bit heavy, to give it some added security, I'm going to add some Gorilla Glue to the back of the sawtooth hanger before I apply the screws in. I just want to make sure it stays there and it doesn't fall off the wall. I'm going to pre-drill the holes 
And then I'll go ahead and screw that in and now I have a nice secure hold for the back of the sign. Now because I am hanging it where there is no stud, I went ahead and put an anchor in the wall and then I hung it up beside the tub. For the smaller sign, I am using this free printable. I found this at freepick.com, which is F-R-E-E-P-I-K. And I need to give credit to rawpixel.com. I will have both of those in my description box below if you are interested in going over to their site and printing out this free printable. Now, I just held it over top of my sign, made creases, and cut that down. Now, I'm going to apply it to the wood sign with Mod Podge. So, the key to this to try to eliminate as many wrinkles as possible is to not oversaturate your paper with the Mod Podge, but you do want an even amount, especially around those outside edges and corners. I'm going to smooth it out with my fingers and then use this cute rolly tool from plaid to roll that out and make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Because it will be in my bathroom where there is moisture, I'm going to add a layer of Mod Podge to the top. After that dries, I'm going to attach the frame just like I did with the previous sign using wood glue and the finish nailer. When I show you the final reveal, the decor that I used to decorate my bathroom with are some DIYs that I made in last week's video, which you can click here to see, and I'll also have it in my description box. But before I show you, let's talk about the total cost. So the wall paint was $35, the stain was $9, the sheetrock patch was $5.50, the bronze caulk was $6.70, mirror adhesive $10, mirror $73, the wood for the wall and the towel hanger was $27.72, and all the other supplies I had on hand with a total of $166.92. So here's a reminder of what it looked like before the makeover, everything was very beige and plain and really needed some paint. And now for the final reveal, I can't wait to share it with you. When you enter my bathroom, this gorgeous wall just draws your eye immediately to it. It gives it's such a beautiful, rustic spa feel. I repurposed the shelf that I had beside my vanity and placed it on one side of the tub. And it is now holding this gorgeous sign that we just made with the free printable and the spa washcloths. On the other side, I have my bath salts and my candle, which is in my previous DIY video and the other gorgeous sign, which just is a simple reminder to be grateful every day. I love the way the towel hanger came out, and then the beautiful recessed shelves above the toilet, I complemented with silver, like the fixtures in my bathroom, the greenery for pops of color, and then the beautiful white and brown, and it gives it such a natural feel. This mirror made the biggest difference in this bathroom aside from the wood wall. It very looks very much high end and looks so much better now that it is the length of the vanity and I love the way it reflects the wood on that accent wall. Let me know down in the comments section below what you think of my rustic spa bathroom makeover. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you found tons of inspiration and perhaps feel empowered to pick up some of those power tools and give them a try. Thank you so much for taking time to watch my video. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give me a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, and don't forget to visit me on my other social media accounts. All those links are in the description box. Take care, you guys.